Welcome everyone. This is going to be a slow, fluid, gentle, graceful practice, focusing on connection, connection your, connecting your breath with the movement and connecting to a feeling of wholeness, that everything in your body is connected, that one movement leads to another movement. And we want to find the balance between those like forces that help to bring an overall balance to our bodies. So that when we feel balance in our bodies, we also can feel balance in our minds and in our emotions and just have a much more like enjoyable time where things tend to flow more than that we're going, so that we're going with the flow rather than going against the flow. So let's start by closing our eyes. Relax your shoulders. Lift up through the back of your skull. So there's a nice smooth curve in the back of your neck. With every inhale, feel your inner body fill up and expand and grow. And with every exhale, feel it just shrink down just a little bit. So there's a sense of being grounded and connected deep into the center of the earth. Feel the movement of your breath in and out through your nose. Knowing that, know, knowing that you're nourishing your body, you're fe feeding your body with your breath. Begin to bring some movement where you some cat cow movements into your spine. So you're arcing your heart forward on the inhale and pressing back and rounding on the exhale. It's finding a nice movement to get the spine fluid and free. I just come back to center and take your right hand over to your left collarbone and just massage your collarbone so we're getting the lymph moving. Nice light touch and then just gently pat tap around the collarbone and then we'll take the left hand to the right collarbone and again you just want to feel like you're connecting with this energy that you're letting go of toxins that you're like enhancing your lymphatic system which helps your immune system and do a little bit of tapping there and take your hands, separate your third and fourth fingers and just run the outside of your third finger up along the edge of the ear. Again, this is a light touch. We're not digging in. And then find that little divot like right behind your earlobes between your jawbone and the skull and just gentle massaging circles there. Continuing to stay connected to the breath and just do a little gentle tapping and just lightly draw your fingers towards your shoulders. Lift the left elbow up and take your right hand and massage all around your shoulder, the inner shoulder, the armpit area. A little gentle tapping. And then left hand to the right shoulder, armpit. Just think that you're doing this with a feeling of love and a feeling of knowing that we have deep healing powers within ourselves. And there's little things that we can do that even don't take that much time. Like this literally you can do in less than five minutes. And then take your hands to your belly and start to, you can move back and forth, you could circle around. and gently tap and then curve your spine and just massage the inner groin area. And gentle tapping there. And now I'll massage the back of the knees. 
And it's focusing your attention on this energy that we're creating here. A little tapping. And we'll just come back to the collarbone area again. And you could try doing both sides at the same time. If you don't like it, you could do one at a time. And a little gentle tapping. And bring your, um, like tap the, the tip of your fingernails all around your skull. You're just kind of energizing your mind. And feel that kind of tingly sensation from this gentle tapping. And release your arms down to your knees. Sit up nice and tall. Ground down through the tailbone so there's no arch in your spine. And gently lower your left ear toward your left shoulder. But think of lifting up through your back. So you're getting a big stretch across the right side of your neck. Reach your right head out to the side and like press your, your head back a little bit. And start to rotate your shoulder in and out. Your shoulder can be, your hand can be at any height. It could be shoulder height. It could be down a little lower. I find that if it's down lower, it feels like more of a stretch to me. But just listen to your own body and do what feels good right now. And then let float your head back up and pause in the center. Noticing how this feels. And then lower your right ear towards your right shoulder. Keep that internal lift. Stretch your left arm out to the left. Begin to internally and externally rotate your shoulder. Feeling that big or gentle stretch on the left side of your neck. And come on back up. And just gently roll out your shoulders. Reverse the direction of your circles. Interlace your fingers with your hands on the back of your head and start to curl inward. So tucking your chin towards your chest, rounding your spine. Then push your head up into your hands and feel that big stretch. You can open your elbows out to the side and you can draw them in. Keep pressing your head up. So it's not that your hands are pulling your, pushing your head down, it's that your head is lifting up into your hands. Good. Then lift your head up, float your arms up with the palms facing toward this guy. Draw your tailbone down, pull your low ribs in, and then reach over to the right, with your right hand on the ground, shift your rib cage to the left. Open up your chest and then reach your arm across. Maybe you can bend your right elbow and you could come in and out of this pose by bending and straightening your elbow. It's one way of doing it. Good. Inhale back up all the way over to the other side. Reach up, send your ribs to the right. Bend your left elbow, reach your right arm across. And then you can straighten and bend your left arm. Nice, come on back up through center and just take a moment to relax and notice how you feel. If you already feel a sense of openness and a sense of freedom, Bring your hands behind your back, interlace your fingers, roll your shoulders open, and start to lift your hands up and away from the floor, away from your back, away from the floor as best you can. Release your hands, bring your arms forward, cactusing your elbows. And this time we'll come into a little back bend. So press the elbows forward to lift your chest up. And then wrap your arms in, right elbow on top of the left, eagleizing your arms. Inhale, open up, cactus, find a little back bend. And exhale, left elbow on top, eagleizing your arms. One more time, each side. Inhale, open up, 
Lift the chest up. Exhale, right elbow on top and wrap. Inhale, open into cactus. Exhale, wrap, left elbow on top. And come back to seated again. Maybe do some head circles so you could roll your left ear towards your left shoulder. And then tucking your chin, roll forward and over to the other side. And just keep, keep a nice steady movement back and forth. Nice, come back to center. Sit up nice and tall. And let's come onto our hands and knees and sit back on your heels. Reach your hands back and try and lift your toes up so you can slide your hands, your fingers underneath the toes, kind of wiggling down there as much as you can. And then as you lean forward, pull the, t the top of the toes up away from the floor. So you feel a big stretch on the front of your foot. And then maybe you can wiggle your hands in even a little further or not. And again, lean forward, find that stretch. Good. Bring your weight back, release your hands, bring your hands behind you and pull your knees up as much as you can. Feeling a similar stretch, but this time we've got weight into our feet, into our toes. And maybe you could shift your chest forward. Maybe you could balance over your legs. Lower your knees down, bring your left hand by your side, by your left foot, and just lift your hips up and forward. And lower back down again. Bring your right hand by the right foot. Lift your hips up and forward with your hand behind the back of your head. Lower your hips down. Walk your hands forward, coming into a child's pose. Let your forehead rest on the floor. And breathe into your back. Nice, big, long, slow, easy breaths. On your next inhale, round up into cat. Bring your right foot out to the right a little bit. Stretch your left leg long. Reach your left arm up and over as you lift your hips up toward your ribs up, ribs up toward the sky. And pick your leg up. Reach your arm up. Expand and lower down and reach. Inhale, lift up. This time, bring your foot all the way forward to the front of your mat. Bring your hand down to the inside of your foot and open your knee out to the side. And lower it out, pull it back in. Activate your back leg by pressing the top of your foot into the floor. And you can hover your knee just off the floor. You could keep the knee softly down. But you wanna feel a big stretch on the hip flexor of the right leg. And shift your hips back. You can walk the back knee back as far as you want. You could come into like a, a basic runner's lunge with your hips kind of over your, the, the back knee. Or you could extend your front foot forward, but keep hugging in so that you're in control. You could slide the back knee back a little bit. This is if you want to go more towards a full split. Keep hugging in and reaching out. So you're not losing control. You're not just dropping down into this. They're, it's very mindful. You want to keep the legs nice and strong. Don't force anything. And at the same time, be careful not to just let gravity take over. You can hug in here a lot. You can engage your legs, squeeze the glutes. And then slowly bring your back knee forward. Come back into your runner's lunge or continue in the runner's lunge. Just internally, internally and externally rotate the hips. And step back into your tabletop. Just move around spontaneously. And 
And maybe do a little shoulder flossing by lifting and lowering the chest. Keep gripping the mat with your hands. So you take some of the pressure out of the heel of your hand. Now let's spin the left leg out to the left a little bit. Stretch the right leg out, reach the right arm up and over, lift up through your rib cage. And lift your arm and leg up, expand, extend, and exhale, lower down. Lifting the rib cage up, reaching your fingers toward the floor. Inhale, back up again. Exhale, lower. Inhale, back up. This time, spin your leg all the way forward. Bring your hand to the inside of your foot and let your knee open out to the side and then hug back in. Always pay attention to what's going on. So if your back knee is uncomfortable on the floor, you can either adjust like I just did, or you could place like a little pillow or a blanket underneath your knee. Good. Now shift your heel forward and you can stay here in a runner's lunge, or you could grip the mat and start to stretch out, like move your feet away from each other. But again, remember to hug in and maybe do little pulses. So lowering down to where the stretch is more extreme and then kind of hug in and lift up, releasing some of that stretch. So that when we're in, if you decide to go towards splits and you can go in little increments, but you're not just dropping into them. And even if you can, it might mean that you're hypermobile and it's still not the best way to do it. So we want to go with mindfulness, listening to our bodies, learning something new every day. Then come back into your runner's lunge if you were working more towards the splits. You can point and flex your toe, toes. And step back into your tabletop. We'll start to circle the hips. Imagine that you're drawing a circle with your hips out to the side, up, out to the other side, and down. And reverse the circles. Walk your knees back a little bit and send your hips towards your heels in child's pose. Inhale, come forward, lowering your elbows to the floor, keeping your hips up in the air, big arch in your low back. And then as you come forward, lift your elbows up and the chest comes forward and reaches forward, coming up into a little, well, into a little or a big cobra. Gauge the legs. And then start to puff up into your back between your shoulder blades and reach back into child's pose. And we'll repeat that a couple more times. So bend the elbows, elbows down, chin low. And then as you start to come forward through your elbows, pick the elbows up and scoop forward and up into your cobra. Puff up in between the shoulders, round into cat and slide back to child's pose. Do one more on your own like that. Just figuring it out, figuring out the little nuances. And we'll meet in child's pose. Inhale forward into cat. Walk your hands back so that your wrists are underneath your shoulders. Bring your right hand behind your back and twist your rib cage to the right. And then release your hand, just letting it float up. And thread your arm under and across, not touching the floor, but just reaching across. And come back, open up to twist, this time with your arm up in the sky, and then reach across. Open up into your twist. Stretch, stay in your twist, stretch your left leg back, and then swing it out to the side. And thread your right arm underneath. Maybe you can grab a hold of your foot, move your hand lower the side of your head down, the right shoulder down. 
and just explore the expression of this pose. Let yourself sink into it, but not like by spacing out, by being even more present and feeling all the little places, the little muscles, maybe a feeling of that you're stretching the fascia, the weight of the bones. And press down into your left hand and twist back open to the right. Bring your right hand down, bring your left knee back and move around. And bring your left hand behind your back and twist to your left. Exhale, lower down, reach your arm across. Inhale, twist to the left. Exhale, reach across to the right. Inhale, twist to the left, straighten your right leg, swing it out to the side, and then reach across, reaching for your right foot with your left hand, lower your shoulder down, the side of your head down. Just a few more breaths here. And push into your right hand, unthread your left arm, twisting back to the left. And lower your left hand down. Come back into tabletop. This time tuck your toes and lift your hips up and back. Down dog. Grip with the mat with your hands and hug inward. Make sure that your fingers aren't rotating inward, but if anything, they're rotating a little bit outward to facilitate an external rotation of the shoulders. So you don't want the shoulders dropping in, re reaching up by your ears. You want them spreading apart. Inhale, ripple forward into plank. Exhale back, down dog. A couple more times, rounding forward and arching back. Next time you come forward, keep lowering your hips toward the floor, coming into upward facing dog with your toes tucked, legs hugging in, open up through the chest. And lift up and back into your downward facing dog. Do that two more times. Inhale, round forward. Lower the hips, open up, up dog. Exhale, lift back to down dog. Inhale, ripple forward. Find your upward facing dog. And then lift up into your back, round your spine, and then settle back into your down dog. Begin to bend one knee at a time, reaching your knee across. And walk your hands back to your feet. Lift and spread all your toes as much as you can. And keeping the toes spreading apart, lower the toes down so that there's space between your toes. And lift the heels up, lower them down, lift the front of the foot up. Lower the front of the foot down, lift the heels up. And lower back down, lift up. And stay lifted on your heels and start to walk your hands, if you can, even this one step forward. And start to lower down, keeping the toes lifted, but the base of the toes are down. Reach a little more forward. And lower the toes down and walk as far forward as you can. Lift up onto your toes, bring your right leg out to the side and then cross it over to the left side. 
bring the left leg up and out to the side and cross it over to the right side. And so we're just gonna walk toward the front of the mat, crossing our legs, and then coming into our Uttanasana, standing forward fold. Bend your elbows, let your ribs rest on your thighs. Bend your knees a little bit or a lot. And just let your head hang. And sink your hips down. Reach your arms up, coming into Utkatasana chair pose. Draw the tailbone under and press into the earth. Rise all the way up. Interlace your fingers over your head. Reach the tailbone down as you reach your palms up. Shift your ribs to the left as you reach your arms to the right. Inhale back through center. Shift your ribs to the right as you reach your arms to the left. And come back to center. Release your hands. Bring your hands behind your back. Interlace your fingers and reach down and then up and away. Release your hands, cactus your elbows. Bend your knees, coming into like an Utkatasana with your elbows open. And exhale, wrap the right arm on top, eagle eye to your arms, hug in. Inhale, open up. Exhale, wrap the arms with the left elbow on top, round. Inhale, open up. Keep your arms in a cactus position and then push into your toes. Lift up, straighten your arms as you straighten your legs. Exhale, sink your heels to the ground as you float your arms down. Inhale, rotate the shoulders open, float your arms up. And exhale, float them down. A couple more times. Inhale, reach out and up. Exhale, reach out and down. One more time. Inhale, reach out and up. Exhale, reach out and down. Softly bend your knees and begin to do a little bouncing. So you're just kind of letting the shoulders be loose, shaking things out, shaking out any tension, any toxins. Then press into the ground, drill your feet into the floor. On your next inhale, pull your left knee up, squeeze your knee into your chest, and exhale, reach back, warrior three. Inhale, if you bend your knee, pull your knee up again, squeezing your knee up to your chest, lifting out of your right hip, and then exhale, reach back. One more time, inhale forward, pull your knee up. Exhale, reach it back. And come up into tree pose, open up here. And release down. Just notice how you feel. Inhale, pull the right knee up. Exhale, reach back, warrior three. Inhale, pull your knee in, reach up. Exhale, reach back, warrior three. Inhale, pull up. Exhale, reach back, warrior three. Last time, we're going to pull the knee up into tree pose. And release down into Tadasana. Just kind of shake things out again. And root down through your legs. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, forward fold. Step back to plank. Bend your knees and pivot your knees and your toes to the left. You can reach your left arm up, maybe straighten the legs. And bring your hand down, pivot your knees to the right. Maybe lift your hips up. Maybe straighten your legs. Come back into your plank. And slowly lower all the way down. Press into your feet. Inhale, rise up to your cobra. Exhale, lower down. Bring your forearms forward so your elbows are underneath your shoulders. 
squeeze your left heel in towards your hip and release it and letting it go. Exhale, squeeze in. Inhale, let it go, release. Exhale, squeeze in. This time, reach back with your left hand for your left foot. And just like we did earlier, trying to get your, your hands on top of the top of your toes so you can stretch out the toes. And just gently draw your heel in towards your hip and then release it away. Good, release your foot, bend your right knee, squeeze it in, and relax and release. Exhale, squeeze in, relax and release. One more time, exhale, squeeze in. This time reach back with your right hand for your right foot. And gently pulse in and out of a quad stretch. Uh, release your foot, bring your hands back by your sides, engage your legs, inhale, curl up into your cobra, open up. And see if you can sink your hips a little closer to the floor and pull the curl of your back up into the back of your shoulder blades as much as you can. Nice, lower down. Reach your arms back and then lift your chest up away from the floor, lift your legs up away from the floor. And sweep your arms forward, and then cactus your elbows back. Inhale, reach forward. Exhale, reach back. Inhale, reach forward. Exhale, reach back. Plant your hands again. Rise up into your cobra. Lower down, bend your left knee, grab a hold of your left foot with your left hand, reach your right arm forward. And kick back with your foot, lift up through your right leg, through your right arm, through your chest. And lower down, switch sides. So connect to this like hugging in and then use that to expand. Good, lower down. Rest your forehead on the back of your hands. Bring your feet up and windshield wiper your feet from side to side. So your legs twist from one side to the other side. Now come back together to, to center, squeeze your heels in towards your hips, reach back for your feet. You can grab a hold of your feet or your ankles and kick back to lift up again. Just do the best you can. And slowly release, lower down, bring your hands back by your sides. Curl up into your cobra again. Lower down, tuck your toes, and press up and back into your down dog. Again, just move around here. Inhale, reach your right leg up, standing down dog splits. Pull your knee into your chest and start to extend your leg forward as you come forward with your weight. Rotate the back heel down and in, warrior one, rise up. Push into the ground like you're anchoring your feet into the ground. So you have this strong foundation and continue to reach out through the back heel. Maybe pull the right hip back a little bit. Reach your arms up and start to sink forward more through your front knee. As you reach your knee forward, let your shoulders move back. And you should feel, most likely you're gonna feel a pretty big long stretch through the back of your back calf. Open your arms out to the side and slowly press up into warrior three. And bend your front knee, step back, warrior two. Open your arms apart from each other. Reach back, reverse your warrior. Come back through warrior two, straighten your front leg, parallel your feet, coming into a wide-legged forward fold and begin to shift from side to side. Now you can stay high in your side lunges or you could go low, even into skandasana, like a really deep squat. So this leg is off the floor, but it's pretty close. 
And then to switch, you push into that front leg and shift over to the back leg. This requires good flexion of your ankle and some strength in your quads, or you can use your hands. Come back to center. Then swivel your right foot forward to the front of your mat again. Straighten your front leg, open up triangle. Reach your top hand back, and as it comes down, lift the back heel up, lower your knee to the floor, reach both arms up. And exhale, lower down, lift your back knee off the floor, coming back into triangle. And then we're gonna come down into a low lunge with the left knee down and back into triangle. One more time. And reach forward, press into the earth to float your right leg up and back into down dog splits. And back to your down dog. Inhale, reach the left leg up. Come up high into your right toes. Squeeze your knee into your chest. Keep your knee high as you start to straighten your leg coming forward. Rotate the back heel down and in warrior one, rise up. Again, get that feeling of being anchored through your legs, squeezing your thighs in towards each other. Pull the left hip back as you reach the right heel down. Cactus your elbows. Press your chest forward as you reach your knee forward. Keep the back arch lifting. So the sensation for me in my back leg is different than the other side. So here I feel it even in the shin, the muscles around the shin. And start to reach for lifting off with your back leg, floating it up into warrior three variation. Keep your legs strong. And step back into warrior two, open up here. Reach back, reverse your warrior. Straighten your front leg, coming into your wide-legged forward fold. Again, side lunge from side to side. Maybe you come all the way down into your skandasana. And maybe you keep your hips a little higher. Now pivot your left foot forward and come into triangle pose, trikonasana. And lower the top hand back, lower the back knee down. Reach up, lining your low lunge. And back into your triangle. And come forward into your lunge, open up, and back into triangle. One more time, lower the back knee down, lift your arms up, and back into your triangle. Lower the top hand down, press into the earth, float the left leg up and back into down dog splits. Exhale your foot to the floor, lower your knees down, and rest in child's pose. Tuck your toes, lift up and back into your down dog. Walk your feet forward to your hands. Root into the earth, inhale, rise all the way up. Interlace your fingers, reach your palms up. Extend your arms out to the side, slowly lower your arms down by your side. Notice without thinking about it, like where your hands are hanging. So if your hands are forward of your legs, it means your shoulders are rounding forward. If your hands are in line with your, like the center of your hips, then your shoulders are probably in a pretty good position. Notice your tailbone, the tendency is to have this tilt. 
So think of rooting the tailbone down. And that will help to bring the ribs in, just that motion. But you could also think of bringing the ribs in. Inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Step back to plank. And back to down dog. So we're gonna come into wild thing. Bend your knees, pivot your knees to the left. And step your left foot behind you. Open up, wild thing. Bring your hand back down. Bring your feet together. Bend your knees, pivot your knees to the right. Push into your left hand. Think of creating space in your left shoulder as you reach your hips up. And step your foot behind, opening up, wild thing. And come back into your down dog. So we're gonna do wild thing again with an option to take it a little deeper. It's actually quite a bit harder. So it's just coming into side plank and then lifting your knee up in the air and then stepping it back to wild thing. So you can stick with the first version or you could try the second version if you fall, no big deal. So bend your knees, pivot your knees to the left. Grip the mat with your hands so your arm is active, lift up, then pick your knee up. and step it back behind you into wild thing. So if your mat's slippery like mine, it's, <laughs> it's a lot harder to do. Like, but if you push into the mat and hug in, it helps to minimize the slipperiness. And you might find that one side's a little weaker than the other. So bend your knees, pivot your knees to the right. Stack your feet, grip with your left hand, lift your hips up, and see if you can pick your right knee up and step it back behind you, wild thing. Come back into your down dog. Inhale, reach the right leg up. Exhale, step it forward. We're coming into crescent lunge this time. So keep the back heel lifted, reach up. Sink your back knee toward the floor. So both knees are like at 90 degrees to each other. Then straighten the back leg, reach your arms up, and twist to your right towards the front leg. Reach your right hand down, your back leg, reach your left arm up, and then maybe back. Spin the back arm forward, open up, warrior two. Reach back, reverse your warrior, and then reach the back arm forward, so your arms are parallel to each other on a diagonal. And we're just gonna shift from side to side. And then cartwheel the arms, step back into your down dog. Inhale, reach your left leg up. Exhale, hug it in nice and tight. Rise up, crescent lunge. Bend the back knee, so both knees are like at 90 degrees. And straighten the back leg, open up across the chest, and twist to your left, extending your arms out nice and wide. Reach your left hand back by your legs, reach your right arm up. Maybe reach the right hand back, right arm back. And swing back forward into your crescent lunge, and back to downward facing dog. We're gonna step into half moon. So we did a baby half moon at the beginning on our hands and knees when our leg was parallel to the floor and our top arm was lifted up. It's harder on your foot than on your knees, but same ideas. So inhale, reach your, and you might wanna have a block. If you have a block and you like to do half moon with a block, you can do that. So if you've never done half moon before, this might be a little challenging. And even if you have done it a lot, you can work on refining the openness and the feeling of grace. So inhale, reach your right leg up. Exhale, pull your knee into your chest. Step your foot and land it where your right hand was. Bring the right hand out to the side a little bit. Squeeze your legs, 
jack your hips and your shoulders and reach that top leg up. Your glutes should be engaged here. And you want to really open up across the shoulders. You could gaze up toward the sky. Make sure that you're rooted into your right heel. And lower the left hand down, square your hips, standing splits. Step your left leg back, letting your knee to the floor. Rise up, low lunge. Bring your hands together in front of your heart and twist to your right and lower the left elbow toward the right knee, open up. Come back up again, extend your arms. Swing the back arm forward and shift your hips back into like, kind of almost like a runner's lunge. You can have hands on the floor, hands in the air. And then come back up, reach your hands behind you. Inhale forward, reach arms forward. Exhale, lift up and reach back. Inhale forward, lift up and step back into down dog. Inhale, reach the left leg up. Exhale, hug it in. Step forward into higher half moon. Rise up, open up. It's really important to use your glutes here. Otherwise, your hips are going to, the top hip will be lower. The knee will start pulling over to the right. And you don't want that. You want to engage the glutes to open up the knee. Lift your leg up. Gaze up toward the sky if you can. Remember to root it to your heel. You lower the top hand down for standing splits. And reach back, lower your right knee to the floor. Rise up, low lunge. Bring your hands together and twist to your left, bringing the right elbow to the outside of the left knee. Open your arms apart from each other. And lift up, separate your arms. Swing the back arm forward and up. And step back into your down dog. Walk your feet forward to your hands. Press into the earth. Inhale, rise all the way up. Reach up, reach your heels up as you reach your arms up. Hug your legs in and slowly float down. A couple more times. Inhale, reach up, lift your heels up. Hug your ankles in and slowly lower down. One more time. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, root down, bow in. Inhale, rise all the way up. And exhale, hands to your heart. Inhale, pull the left knee up. Open up, tree pose. Reach out, airplane warrior three. Come back up, pulling your knee up. And stretch your right left leg over to the right. Curtsy squat, I mean, curtsy, <laughs> curtsy to your right, and step it out to the left, coming into a lunge. Step back into your Tadasana. Inhale, pull the right knee up, open up, tree pose. Extend out, warrior three. Pull back up again into your tree pose. Stretch your right leg behind you and stretch out to the left and step out to the right, coming into your lunge and come back into your Tadasana, mountain pose. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold. Plant your hands, step back into plank. Push the floor away as you lower down, letting the hips lower first. Point your toes, rise up into your cobra. Open up. Lower your chest forward. Press back to down dog. And we'll see if we can step forward into tree pose. So it requires a lot of hugging in and moving slowly with control with muscular activation, but also a feeling of openness and fluidity. So inhale, reach your right leg up. 
Exhale, hug your knee into your chest. Keep it hugging in as you step forward. Lift off your fingertips, pulling that left knee up. Open up tree pose. Step your left foot over to the right for a curtsy squat. And step out to the left for a side lunge. Step back into your Tadasana, reach your arms up. Exhale, fold, downward facing dog. So it's a little bit wobbly, it's a little bit challenging unless you've done this a lot or done something like this a lot. So if your foot touches the floor, if you don't make it all the way up, it's no big deal, it's something to work on. So inhale, reach the left leg up. Exhale, step it all the way forward. As you step into your left foot, pull your right knee up and start to lift up, pulling your knee up as you right, rise up. Find your tree pose. Then step your right foot over to the left and step out to the right. Step back to center into your Tadasana. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold. Step back to plank. Push the floor away as you lower down. Rise up, Cobra. Exhale, sit back on your heels for child's pose. Rise up and step your left foot forward. Come on up to a low lunge. Hug your legs in towards each other. Bring your hands together in front of your heart. Tuck your back toes. And twist to your left, bringing the left, right elbow to the outside of the left knee. And lift your back knee off the floor. Look down and step your back knee forward. So you're in Utkatasana with a prayer twist. Press into the earth, inhale, rise all the way up. Exhale, forward fold. Step back, down dog. Lower your knees to the ground. Step your right foot forward with the back toes tucked. Bring your hands in prayer. Twist to your right and bring your left elbow to the outside of the right knee. Lift your back knee off the floor. Look down and step your Back leg forward, coming into Utkadasana with a prayer twist. And rise up to Tadasana. And back into your forward fold. Step back, down dog. Nice, lower your knees to the floor. Keep your toes tucked, and if you have blocks, you could use blocks here. We're gonna come into camel pose, Ustrasana, so a back bend. So it requires a lot of posterior tilt, hugging your legs in and lifting up through your chest, just like Cobra. So first interlace your hands behind your back, reach your arms back and puff your chest up as you squeeze your legs in. Release your hands, float your arms up, cactus your elbows and lift your chest even higher, squeezing the legs, creating that posterior tilt. Reach back with your right hand, finding your right heel, Extend your left arm to the sky. Keep squeezing the glutes. Bring your left hand back down again. Reach your right arm up. Reach back for your left heel. And then come on back up. Untuck your toes. Sit back on your heels. Stretch your toes out. And come back onto your hands and knees again. Lift up. Now you can tuck your toes or you can keep your toes untucked. Think tailbone down. So you could bring your hands to your low back with your fingers pointing down and use your fingers to guide the back of the hips down. Squeeze your legs in and open up through your heart, pulling your elbows towards each other and start to curl into your upper back. Now you can stay here or you could release your hands, find your heels. 
You could stay here or you could walk your hands forward towards the back of your knees. Whichever variation you're doing, keep the legs strongly hugging in and then come on back up. Sit back on your heels. Again, lift your knees up to stretch out the feet. Good, one more time. Lower down, come back up onto your knees. Squeeze your legs in, root the tailbone down. And take a moment just to visualize like this big front body opening as you arc into your back. So again, squeeze the knees together. So there's lots of ways to coming into this. So we worked last time on tailbone down, like lifting into your upper back. This time, think of keeping your back straight, lowering down, and then reach back for your heels and press your hips forward. And come on back up. Step back into your down dog. Walk your feet forward and bring your feet a little wider than your hips. hips sink, your, sink your hips down, coming into Malasana or squat, yogi squat. Slowly lower your hips to the floor, draw your knees in, reach your legs up for Navasana boat pose. And then pull your belly toward the floor as you extend out, lowering all the way down onto your back. Hug your knees into your chest and circle around your arms. I mean, circle around your hips. Reverse the direction of your circles. Cross your right ankle above your left knee and interlace your fingers on the front of your left shin. If you can't like hold your shin, you can hold the back of your leg. If you're holding your shin, kick your left leg up. Press your right knee away. Really actually you want to start it from the hip joint. So think of opening up the right hip so the knee presses out a little bit more. And you can come in and out of the fullness of this pose. You could circle your ankles. Release your hands, unthread your arm, straighten your left leg on the floor, straighten your right leg up in the air. Gently guide your leg in as close as you can to your rib cage. So this is similar to doing splits. Then grab whatever you can grab, your ankle, your calf, or your heel, and pull down with your hands and press up through your leg. So you feel a strong muscular Contraction, engagement. Then let everything relax. Like coming out of the stretch a little bit so there's not so much tension there. We'll do that two more times. So bend your knee if you need to, grab your calf if you need to, or grab your foot. Then press your foot up into your hands and pull down with your hands. See how tightly you can keep your right leg in towards your chest. And everyone's going to look different here. So some people will be much deeper than me. Some people not as deep. Good. Release your foot and slowly reach out to your toes as you control the descent of your right leg. Try and keep your back, your low back as flat to the floor as you can. And when your heel finally touches down, let everything relax. And notice the transformation here. Just about everyone, if I'm teaching a, a live class, like I just see this expression on their faces relax. And we'll just stay here relaxing in the moment. Enjoying the moment for just a few more breaths. And then we'll continue with the other side. Mm -hmm. 
So flatten your low back into the floor by tilting your pelvis in a posterior tilt. Front hip bones move towards your shoulders and down. Bend your left knee, bend both knees, cross your left ankle above the right knee and thread the needle, interlacing your fingers in the front of your shin or the back of your thigh. And then just play with movement here. Remember, there's lots of ways to explore every pose. And both sides are probably different from each other. Sometimes dramatically different, sometimes just barely a little bit different. Now uncross your left leg, straighten your left leg on the ground. Release your fingers if you're holding the front of your shin and hold the back of your leg. Draw your knee in towards your chest and straighten your leg. If your leg won't straighten, let your knee go a little bit further away. Straighten your leg as much as you can. Then reach up to your calf, your ankle, or your foot and push your right foot up into your hand. Pull down with your hands. So working on this hamstring stretch, which feeds into other muscles. So nothing is ever isolated in our body. Keep your legs active and then relax. So there's different theories, like one theory that I read is you, uh, you contract for about, I think it's like five breaths and then you relax for about 30 breaths. But I think you could kind of work it however you want. Like you could make it even, you could, you, know, you want to make the contraction probably long, shorter than the relaxation part. But just again, like press down, hug in, feel that contraction. Hold it, keep breathing. And then relax and release, release your hands, arms out to the side, point your toes and reach out through your toes as you slow, slowly lower that right leg down. It always takes longer for my heel to reach the floor than I think it, it should. And when you feel your heel touch, again, let everything relax. And then with your feet apart from each other, so bring your feet almost to the edges of your mat and begin to just rotate your feet in and out. So you feel that movement in your hip socket. And bend your knees, hug your knees into your chest again, wrap your arms around your legs. Flex your feet and if you can reach your feet, reach your feet. Otherwise, just hold wherever it feels comfortable. And extend both legs up. See if you can have the back of your shoulders on the floor. Bend your knees as much as you need to and use your hands to massage your feet. Just noticing all the bones in your feet and you want your feet to feel pliable, not tight and stiff and rigid. Because if we have rigid feet, that transfers up into our knees, into our hips, into our shoulders, even into our neck. And then just grab your calves and kind of squeeze your calves and do a little massage. So moving your hands up the back of your legs, across the soles of your feet and down the front of your legs, then up the outer legs, across the soles of the feet and down the inner legs. And just repeat that a couple of times. So you have this sense of a nice, relaxed massage. 
Now bend your knees and place your feet on the floor. Bring your hands by your sides for bridge pose. Flatten your low back by tucking your tailbone, creating that posterior tilt. Hug the legs in and push into your feet so that your hips lift up. Don't let your knees wander out to the side. Keep them hugging in. Not to touch, but just not to expand outward. And then slowly lower down one vertebra at a time. And do nine more of these bridge lifts. So hugging in, lifting up. And lower down. So that's two, we're going for 10. Just press down and lift up. You can move nice and slowly, but do keep your glutes engaged. Don't let your hips just drop. And see if you can roll up and down evenly. So both sides of the spine feel like even pressure, even weight. And you might have a tendency to be twisted to one side or the other, not noticing it, but it could show up here if it's a pattern of that's held in your muscles. But here you can be mindful and you can correct it. So I think we've got about four more. Three more. So there's a deep sense of relaxation as you lower your back down. Two more. And one more. And float your arms and legs up again, coming back into dead bug pose. And see if you can feel a sense of floating, like your feet are floating over your hips and your hands are floating over your shoulders. Back of your shoulders are really grounded into the earth and the hips and the low back are grounded into the earth as well. Notice as soon as you start to lower your legs, your low back wants to lift off the floor, unless you create a big effort to tense the abs and to keep your low back flat. So you can use that as a way of building muscle tone in your back and your legs, really in your whole body, your whole core. Now bend your knees and let your knees gently graze the outer rib cage coming into happy baby. Now you don't have to hold your feet in happy baby. If your head is pulled off the ground and your hips are off the ground because you just don't have that extension, then hold lower on your legs. Think of getting the knees toward the floor and your feet toward the sky. And you can use whatever opportunity that comes up to explore your, your feet, your toes. Bring the soles of your feet together, interlace your fingers on the outer edges of your feet, lower your feet towards your hips, and open your knees out to the side, and then relax them. Try and flatten your back to the floor as you open your knees out to the side, feeling a big stretch on your shoulders and your neck. And then you can release, letting the knees come in a little closer and then press them away again. And you can just flutter back and forth. Imagining that your legs are like wings of a butterfly. And come back into your happy baby. And release your feet, bring your feet as wide as the mat. Open your arms out to the side. And we're just gonna twist slowly from side to side. Nice windshield wiper pose.
Come back to center, bring your legs together, and bring your legs into 90 degrees at your hips and 90 degrees at your knees. Lift your hips up and shift them to the right. Twist your knees to the left. You can turn your head to the right. And this might be the perfect twist for you. Otherwise, you could straighten your right leg out and maybe grab a hold of your right foot with your left hand. And then you could straighten your right leg out towards the bottom of your mat, even rolling a little bit onto your, the inside of your left hip. Now roll your upper body over to the right. So maybe both shoulders could be on the floor. You could stay here. You could go back to where we started with our knees at 90 degrees. Or you could bend your left knee, grab a hold of your left foot with your right hand. And again, you could kick your feet out. You could externally rotate your right hip. You could press your feet into the floor. Like all these different subtle actions you can play with. You can go back and forth between activating your muscles and relaxing the muscles. That helps to relax your nervous system so that it allows your body to relax more rather than being afraid that you might injure it unintentionally. So we're going to slowly come back onto our back, however you want to manage that. If you're holding your left foot, release it. If your right leg is straight, you can keep it straight. If both legs are bent, you can keep them bent. And just think of pulling your top hip to the ground, center yourself on the mat. You could massage your right foot here a little bit with your left hand. And just see if you can like feel the big toe metatarsal head. And see if you can feel movement in that. Reach your arms up over your head. And keeping your left knee bent, straighten your right leg, keep your right leg straight, and slowly lower it to the floor. Reaching your toes away from your fingers and trying to keep your low back on the floor, which will take some effort. And when your heel finally touches the earth, straighten your left leg. So both legs are straight, and then you can just wiggle out through your fingers and toes, trying to keep that your back flat on the floor. And bend both knees, bring the left leg up. Reach your foot, massage around your foot. Again, finding that big toe mound and noticing, like, you can just imagine the power in that, how it propels you forward, it helps you to jump, helps you to run, helps you to walk. And release your arms over your head. Point through your left toes and stretch out through your toes as you reach your toes away from your fingers. Slowly, 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 trying to keep your low back flat on the floor until your heel finally touches down and straighten your right leg. Keep your low back pressing into the floor. And bend your knees and shift your hips to the right. Bring your left leg out to the left and cross your right ankle above your left knee, trying to keep that right hip on the floor. So we're creating like a banana shape in our spine. Now wiggle your shoulders over to the left, 
and hold on to your right wrist with your left hand. This is a little bit similar to that curtsy squat we did earlier. So you get a big stretch all along your right side. Like I actually feel it from my right foot all the way up through my right arm and through the right side of the neck. Just notice what you feel. We're just gonna relax here. We'll stay here just a few more breaths. And then we'll unwrap our ankles, shift your hips over to the left, reach your legs out to the right, crossing your left ankle above the right knee and stretch your shoulders over to the right. This time hold your left wrist with your right hand. a few more breaths here. And you can uncross your legs, center your hips and shoulders on the mat. Float your arms and legs up again for a dead bug pose. And you can just rest here in silence or you could move your fingers and your toes your wrists and your ankles. Bend your knees, place your feet on the floor, and let's do some palming. So cup your hands and seal around your eyes with your hands so that nothing is touching your eyelids. And this helps to relax and rest the optic nerve. This is a real key to healing our eyesight is to relax on a deeper level than we normally do. So seeing into the blackness and trying to make any, well not trying to make, observing to see if your vision, and this vision with your eyes closed, if it gets darker and blacker. And that's really what we want is to truly rest the optic nerve, rest our eyes. Now you're free to come out of this um, palming whenever you want, or you could stay here palming for the whole Savasana. 
But Savasana is all about surrender, relaxing, releasing. Notice your exhales and see if you can lengthen into your exhales. Letting yourself sink into your parasympathetic state, the rest and digest, rejuvenate, restore. Release your hands if you are doing, if you have, if you, if you are palming with your hands over your eyes, and slowly start to turn your head from side to side. And move your fingers and your toes. Bend your knees if they're not already bent and roll to your side and just pause for a moment. Reflecting on your practice. And just letting yourself sink into the sensations that you're feeling. And you can use your hands to slowly press your way back up to a comfortable seat. Thanking you for joining me in this practice today. Hope that you feel balanced and relaxed and strong and graceful. Please bring your hands together in front of your heart. Namaste.